right, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, what happened with the Buffalo Bills game uh, versus Cincinnati Bengals last night. Um, as many of you know, a player uh, was uh, making a play and went into sudden cardiac arrest, received CPR in the field. Uh, as of this time, you know, it's currently the 3rd of January. It's only about 726 in the morning Eastern time. Um, still innovated. Uh, vitals looked good but at the last report I saw, but still in critical condition. So um, I'm not really going to touch on the cause of that because I think uh, there's several things that come into play there, and that's for doctors and stuff. What I want to talk about is how you uh, can actually prevent this from happening in your community. It doesn't matter if you have a huge sports venue, doesn't matter if you have a huge arts and entertainment venue, uh, sudden cardiac arrest is when there is a disruption in the heart's ability to maintain a normal rhythm that uh, results in the heart uh, not being able to pump blood to the body, and your body needs blood. Uh, it needs oxygenated blood to the brain, as well as the rest of the vital organs. So whenever someone goes into a sudden cardiac arrest, uh, minutes, seconds, they matter and you have to immediately take action to prevent uh, really bad outcomes from happening. So um, we stress in the emergency services early CPR, uh, you know, uh, early recognition of that sudden cardiac arrest is essential, and of course using an AED, uh, shocking that heart rhythm back into something that's going to be able to pump blood and deliver it to the uh, heart, lungs, rest of the body, um, especially the brain. So um, you need to remember three things, call, push, shock. That's really the essential uh, elements of saving a life when we talk about a sudden cardiac arrest that happens in the community or at home. Uh, most sudden cardiac arrests do happen in the home, so um, you can't really be reliant on making sure that, oh, well, there's going to be someone trained in CPR nearby all the time, because that's not necessarily true. You are responsible for being the one that can save the life. So uh, call. You're going to dial 911. Most places in the United States uh, have some sort of emergency medical dispatching program that uh, they can talk you through telephone CPR. So um, that's just number one. Call, put that on speakerphone, put it right down next to the patient. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to push. You're going to push hard, fast, in the center of the chest, about 100 to 120 beats per minute. Um, Whenever we teach this, we uh, usually use the disco song Staying Alive. There's a lot of other ones out there. Baby Shark, the uh, Imperial March from Star Wars. Pick whatever song works for you, but it's one of those things that uh, that good quality push down also has to be met by a recoil up because that's when the heart fills with blood and that's when uh, the heart's going to be kept alive so that it can get back to doing its normal job as well. So that's push and then shock. Using an AED, they're all very intuitive. They're all very easy to use. You do not need to be intimidated by it. It will not shock you or uh, a patient that doesn't need a shock. So um, put that AED on. Uh, some common pitfalls I've seen uh, when these types of scenarios have happened in the community that uh, I respond to. Um, people being afraid to jump in and help. Uh, that's, that's number one. You will get... Um, a bunch of people trained in CPR, but they're, you know, just members of the community, and you'll also have, you know, an AD right there, but there might be someone who's an old, retired, uh, might have been a, you know, podiatrist or some other, you know, weird ancillary doctor that's like, oh, no, they just had a seizure, um, and then everyone who could help doesn't, and it turns into a really bad uh, outcome for that patient. You need to understand that when someone goes into sudden cardiac arrest, there can be uh, a brief movement. When Christian Erickson had his sudden cardiac arrest at the Euro uh, 2020 uh, uh, opening game, um, he actually had a brief seizure-like activity, but it stops, and there's not a normal breathing. There's uh, only this occasional agonal gasping. <gasps> It's not normal breathing, and you need to immediately uh, intervene. So um, <clears throat> we're trying to push people in our training recently to just start CPR. When the paramedics get here and we can put them on a heart monitor um, and we can see the underlying rhythm, then you can, you know, uh, stop. Now, if the patient gets up and says, please stop, yes, by all means, uh, stop performing CPR. But um, you need to just be ready to act. And if you have and wait for that doubt in your mind to say, well, maybe they're not in cardiac arrest, those are seconds that they're not going to get back. So just jump in, intervene, and when the paramedics or another health professional gets there that can put them on a heart monitor, then we can make the determination if further CPR is needed. But your job as an initial responder is to uh, start pushing, and that's, that's really the critical skill. So um, understand they might have seizure activity. They might take an occasional agonal gasp. <gasps> that's fine. You still need to start pushing. Um, if you have a sports uh, facility in your area, um, and you 
most people with youth sports or uh, with high schools uh, do, especially colleges, then you need to have a plan for this because sudden cardiac arrest can strike you at any age, any place, any time. Um, it's, it's something that there's a lot of potential causes for that can go missed and undiagnosed, especially in youth sports. Um, and then, you know, a failure to plan is a plan to fail. So you really need to make sure that uh, at a minimum, an AED has to be on the sidelines. And that has to be the AED for the players and the coaches and the referees. There should also additionally be an AED for spectators so that you're not going to pull one away if uh, you know it's needed for the other place to happen. Um, my personal preference, if a player, coach, referee, someone of that critical magnitude goes down and with a sudden cardiac arrest, you need to suspend the game. And that's uh, I'm glad that uh, the coaches and the Players Association took that action yesterday. I know there was uh, some controversy there, but um, this is an adrenaline high moment. Uh, one of the reasons we don't have lay people you know, feel for a pulse is because uh, the adrenaline is surging so much, there's a potential for them to feel their own pulse. So that's why it's so critical that... Um, you allow the processing to take place and, you know, suspending the game is important. If it's a uh, person in the stands, and we've seen this actually uh, happen quite a bit in England, um, it's just one of those things that the determination has to be made. Can it safely continue? You may, Maybe you have to relocate spectators so that they're not continuously traumatized, or um, maybe you do have to pause the game for an extended interval of time. That's a determination that uh, should go into the planning uh, feature because, you know, if that person had a youth sports game as a parent or a grandparent of one of the star players, you're not going to get the same production you want from that. So it's okay to pause uh, in the service of life. Um, that's that's perfectly acceptable in my opinion um, and something that should take place uh, anyway. Um, when we start to talk about, you know, what types of sports, well, this happened at a football game, so everyone's going to think, oh, the football, you know, they need an ambulance there, they need all sorts of other people, you know, we've seen soccer or, you know, European-style football um, over uh, have the same kind of issues, um, but this has happened at hockey games, this has happened at basketball games in our local community. Um, there's, there's really nowhere that is cardiac arrest proof, so you need to be response ready uh, for whenever it may happen in your community. Um, there's a lot of great resources out there, but I always encourage people reach out to their local emergency services departments, ask them to get um, some training in CPR, or, you know, if you don't have time for that, there's online resources uh, to just learn those basics, hands-only CPR. You don't need a certification to save a life. The Good Samaritan Act in all 50 states and beyond uh, will protect you as long as you are doing what's in the best interest of that patient. Um, so please, when this happens in your community, and I say when, not if, um, be the responder be the person that jumps right in, uh, start pushing on a, a patient's chest and uh, save their life. Thank you.